get your hands dirty for a change. Well, I have a hard time with the rigid frame. You already know that. We still have thousands of them, thousands, and they're from everywhere in the world. The king of reality TV motorcycles, Paul Tootle Sr., took the entertainment industry by surprise with his show, The American Chopper, and for a whole 10 years, he was a regular part of households all over the world, holding the attention of viewers as the main person on the Discovery Channel's reality show from 2002 to 2012. The show invites fans into his workshop, and they get into the behind-the-scenes world of Orange County Choppers, showing a thrilling world of adrenaline-fueled craftsmanship as they completely transformed ordinary bikes and created unique bikes like no other. But after facing tough challenges after the cancellation of the show, he has made a remarkable comeback. What happened to Paul Tootle, Sr.? What happened to his crew after the show? Join us as we explore the heartbreaking tragedy of Paul Tootle Sr. from the American Orange Country Chopper. When American Chopper first came on TV in 2003, only a few expected it to be a big success or start a new trend. But the show became an immediate success, turning each motorcycle into more than a vehicle and influencing motorcycle fans worldwide as viewers were hooked on the metal artistry. But even with the show's success, the American Chopper was all but perfect as the friction between Paul Sr. and Paul Jr. reached a breaking point. As much as the mixed family drama caught people's interest, it caused a rift between Paul Sr. and Paul Jr. In 2009, the fights led to Paul Jr.'s getting sacked from Orange County Choppers, and a legal dispute arose between the father-son duo over stock options, impacting their relationship and ultimately leading to the show's cancellation. After the show's cancellation, what happened to Paul Leutlis Sr.? The firing of Paul Jr. in April 2009 marked a pivotal moment in the American Chopper narrative, altering the course of the show, and not long after, Paul Sr.'s illicit use of drugs and alcoholism started coming to light. In 2011, a dentist named James M. Damico from Florida admitted to giving out human growth hormones and steroids without permission. Even though Damico lost his dentist license, he continued to prescribe steroids to people. One of his clients, Paul Sr., received over 70 prescriptions from Damico and other health professionals between 2002 and 2006. These prescriptions cost $51,784.78 and were filled by a pharmacy in Orlando, which later pleaded guilty to distributing performance-enhancing drugs in 2013. The investigation into Damico and other doctors has been ongoing since 2007. Paul Sr. got his prescriptions from a clinic in Palm Beach, Florida, which was closed in 2007 due to illegal substance distribution by its owners. However, Paul Sr.'s involvement in the case didn't become public until 2011, and he has never commented on it. Even though Paul Sr. doesn't talk about his connection to illegal performance-enhancing drugs, he has been open about his struggles with alcohol and other drugs. In his 2009 book, The Ride of a Lifetime, he confessed to starting these habits at 15 and continuing them for many years. Over the years, I have wrecked a dozen or more cars. On the weekends, I would wake up and not know where I was or how I'd gotten there, he wrote listing some of his then-recurrent health issues, such as coughing blood, often falling sick, and breaking his arms in car accidents resulting from his addictions. Alcohol problems caused serious issues in Paul Sr.'s family. He didn't realize how bad it was until the mid-1980s, when he admitted to his wife Paula that he was giving up on fighting his addiction. Although Paula convinced him to go to rehab, the fear of losing his successful steel business held him back. Even though he didn't go to rehab, he kept his promise to Paula by attending an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in January 1985. Since then, he's stayed committed to staying sober for himself, his family, and his business. It wasn't easy because he was surrounded by other addicts at work, including his workers and business partner John Grosso. As Paul Sr. became more determined to stay sober and banned alcohol at work, those who shared his addiction, including Grosso, disappeared from his life. Grosso later confessed to Paul Sr. that his alcoholism had affected his liver, and he died at 35. Paul Sr. doesn't regret choosing sobriety, as it helped him take control of his life and build the business he wanted. Most of his issues with alcohol and drugs happened when TV cameras weren't around unlike the constant problems within the Tootle family.
Things took a bad turn between Paul Sr.'s youngest son, Michael, and him. Even though Mikey was always around the shop, helping and providing comic relief on American Chopper, their relationship soured when Mikey became an independent contractor at Orange County Choppers. Mikey felt excluded from important events and decisions, leading to a heated argument with his father. Eventually, Mikey left the company to join his brother Paul Jr.'s design business. While Mikey and Paul Sr. eventually fixed their relationship, seeing them go through tough times was sad. Conflicts between Paul Sr. and his oldest son, Paul Jr., were common on American Chopper. Paulie's disregard for work schedules and rules caused many problems, and their relationship hit rock bottom in 2008 with insults, chairs thrown, and Paulie's termination from the shop. Despite efforts to mend things, Paulie left Orange County Choppers for good and started his own business, Paul Jr.'s Designs. As his television popularity grew, Tutel Sr. leveraged the Orange County Choppers brand to venture into the restaurant business. In May 2010, a Business Wire announcement talked about a big plan to create a place with a restaurant, bar, brewery, games, hotel, store, and entertainment in Newburgh, near where the senior lives and parks cars. But when it actually happened, some investors were disappointed. Originally named Orange County Choppers Roadhouse, the project encountered numerous problems right from the start. According to a 2016 report from the Miami Herald, more than a dozen businessmen claimed to have invested between $12 and $15 million in the venture. There were allegations that the project was marketed to multiple investor groups simultaneously, leading to suspicions that it was part of a Ponzi scheme. The business, which went through several name changes and involved the issuance of shares and paper companies with no real value, raised concerns among some observers. While weddings are usually occasions for families to come together and celebrate, when Paul Tootle Jr. married Rachel Beer in August 2010, it did not lead to a reconciliation between father and son. It wasn't very surprising because Paul Tootle Sr. had taken legal action against his son about stocks in their motorcycle business. The groom's dad didn't show up at the fancy wedding on New Jersey's Bonnet Island estate, even though he was invited. The wedding had a big six-tier cake and $28,000 worth of flowers. But the American chopper dad held on to his hard feelings and didn't attend. The surprising news about Sr.'s money troubles came out when he filed for Chapter 13 bankruptcy in February 2018. In the court papers on page 6, Paul Tootle Sr. said he owed almost $1 million to about 50 people or businesses. He also had debts like $1.8 million for his home, $151,000 in taxes, and $70,000 on credit cards. Each month, he earned about $16,531, but he had to use at least $2,129 to handle his debt, and still owed over $22,000 in taxes to New York State related to the Orange County Chopper Cafe. He also had legal problems, with ongoing lawsuits and claims against him. One example is a $32,000 issue with Hudson Valley Merchandising, and another was a $51,841 claim from JTM Motorsports Incorporated. After settling a $30,000 lawsuit in January 2019, he got sued again by the same company for not keeping up with the agreed payments. Paul Tootle Sr. has been dealing with legal problems for a while. He first went to court with his son in 2009 over a business disagreement. In December 2016, there were accusations that his restaurant project was part of a Ponzi scheme. In 2018, he faced another lawsuit, this time for fraud. Page Six reported that Tootle Sr. was accused of making his business partner, Thomas Derbishi, lose a lot of money by pulling out of a TV project deal. Derbishi said he put $3 million into a spin-off TV show, Orange County Choppers, American Made, but Sr. caused problems. Sr. supposedly delayed filming for personal reasons, took sponsorships without talking to Derbishi, and used some of the money for his son Michael Tutul's salary. Sr.'s spokesperson told Page Six that Derbishi's version of what happened isn't valid. As far as we know now, this issue is still ongoing. In March 2018, the Times-Herald record revealed that Paul Tootle Sr.'s $1.8 million mansion in Montgomery, New York, was in danger of being taken away. Less than two months later, it was said to be up for sale. The foreclosure filing was seen as a way to figure out what to do about an ongoing tax assessment request. 
The property, sitting on 38 acres, had a log cabin-style home with three bedrooms, 2.5 baths, a stone fireplace, a volleyball court, an in-ground pool with a pool house and waterfalls, a koi pond, a barn, and a two-story garage with guest apartments. The house eventually sold for $1.65 million in 2019. Even though Paul Tootle Sr. and Jr. had a strained relationship, there was a bit of hope in 2020 with The Last Ride, a special episode of American Chopper. The episode showed a possible reconciliation as father and son worked together on a bike build in their old New York building, which was set to be torn down. But tensions flared up again when they disagreed on the design of a custom bike for ABC Supply Company. In 2020, Paul Tootle Sr. decided to move his motorcycle business from Newburgh, New York to Florida because he wanted a different lifestyle. The move was driven by a desire for more fans, a longer time to ride bikes and economic benefits, especially in taxes. By making this move, he had to leave behind the big 61,000 square foot headquarters he built in 2008 for $13 million. This place had a workspace for building bikes, a store for selling merchandise, and offices. In 2011, when they were having money problems, the Toy Tools had to give up the property to the creditor, GE Commercial Finance Business Corps. However, they kept using it for their business for the next nine years. The building was sold in an online auction in 2016 for almost $2.3 million to Breest Mixed Asset Owner LLC, a company based in Dallas. Even though people talked about finding a new use for the building, like turning it into a convention center or brewery, it has been left empty and not used since 2023. Recent pictures show it in bad shape, with the Orange County Choppers logo on the front sidewalk almost falling apart and the inside losing its old charm. After relocating his assets to Florida, Paul Tootle Sr. made a strong comeback in the biker scene. In 2021, he inaugurated the OCC Roadhouse and Museum, an impressive $6.5 million complex spread across 9.5 acres of land next to Beers Barracuda Harley-Davidson in Clearwater near St. Petersburg. Beyond the unique grub offerings, including beer cheese soup and home record chili dogs, the museum, housed in a massive pavilion, has been the main attraction. People can check out items from TV shows hosted by Paul Sr. and a collection of the unique bikes he has designed and built over the years. It's like a timeline of shiny chrome. Before the OCC attraction opened, Paul Sr. shared his happiness with Fox 13 Tampa Bay, saying, I like the fact that this is like a final resting place for his bikes. People will get to see this and they'll get to enjoy it more than when I had a big garage and a lot of it in there. Thousands and thousands of people will come here and they'll get to appreciate it. About 1,500 fans came during the opening weekend to explore the new place. The business owner then focused on setting up live events with Burt Barracuda Harley-Davidson, the nearby neighbor. The OCC and Harley-Davidson had worked together before on the annual Street Pete Bike Fest, showing off over 200 motorcycles. In May 2023, they took on a bigger project, a three-day exhibition with the first Orange County Chopper Invitational Bike Show and Biker Build-Off Competition. This event let Paul Sr. display his creations, like the FDM Line 9 Relevance Fire Bike and NASA Chopper, and brought in participants from all over the world who proudly showed their unique bikes. There were entries ranging from a stretched sports bike to a Honda Rainbow Chopper. More than 40 bikers competed for cash prizes in stock and modified categories, with hundreds more showing off their bikes. Although the number of people who attended wasn't shared, Paul Sr. is hopeful that the 2024 event will bring in even more people, expecting double the attendance. Speaking on the Cycle Drag streamer, he said, I think everybody here appreciated everything. With such great builders, and the American Chopper star who had financial struggles a few years ago has successfully turned his luck around. Before discussing what happened to the rest of the cast crew, let's discuss Paul Sr.'s life outside of business. Paul's love for his loyal pets isn't just in his heart, but also in his skin. On his arm is a portrait of his old bull mastiff, Gus, also known as Gussie. This detailed artwork brings to life the memories and love he shared with his dear pet. Continuing his tribute to his furry friends, Paul honored another loyal companion on his skin, 
a tattoo of his bull mastiff Marty, created by the famous artist Amy James. This tattoo and the Gus portrait forever celebrate the love and loyalty these furry pals brought into his life. On his left arm, there's a text tattoo that says Oscar Mike, double underlined with a small star. This phrase, often used in the military, means on the move. It shows Paul's strong spirit, always moving forward despite challenges. Paul Tootle Sr. has made a mark in surprising places. In the 2007 biker comedy movie Wild Hogs, he had a small role with his famous Orange County Choppers bike, alongside stars like Tim Allen, John Travolta, and Martin Lawrence. He loves animals and has bull mastiffs named Miley, Maddie, Lenny, and Ralph, and a pig named Peaches. Paul strongly supported the armed forces and sailed with the United States Merchant Marines during the Vietnam War. He played volleyball in a fundraiser for Will McHugh, showing his commitment to helping veterans and active military personnel. Paul hasn't shied away from controversy. He openly supported Donald Trump during the 2016 presidential political campaign, showing his willingness to express his beliefs. Looking into Paul's personal life gives a peek into the man behind the legend. He's a dedicated gym enthusiast and likes things neat. He values discipline and hard work, appreciates honesty, and even becomes Santa Claus to bring joy to kids during special times. Through the ups and downs, Paul Tootle Sr.'s legacy continues. There were rumors about him dying from cancer in 2012, but as of 2023, he's alive and vibrant. From his early days in the steel business to his love for motorcycles, he's shown what it means to follow your passion. He finds peace in his tidy workshop and the perfect lines of his motorcycles, giving life to his creations with careful attention to detail. Shared traits and strong determination connect father and son. Paul sees himself in Danny, who is aggressive, independent, and self-reliant. Together, they navigate life's challenges, leaving their mark on the world. Amid all his activities, one constant is the gym, a place where Paul finds peace and strength. The iron becomes his inspiration, shaping not just his body but also his strong spirit. Paul Tootle Sr. is believed to have a net worth of $500,000. This significant amount reflects his success and achievements in the industry. After the show ended, you may wonder what became of the cast crew as Paul Tootle Sr. continued his journey by collaborating with Keith Overton, a tourism entrepreneur and motorcycle enthusiast. Paul Jr. was not just an employee at Orange County Choppers, he helped start the business and owned 20% of its shares. After he was fired, his father wanted to buy those shares. Given the strained relationship between father and son, Sr. opted for legal proceedings rather than persuading his son to sell his stake willingly. How Paul Sr. acquired his son's share in the company might only sit well with some. His initial notice of default seemed designed to compel his son into the sale. Unsurprisingly, Jr. resisted the request and filed a countersuit, accusing his father of corporate waste, essentially alleging fraud. After protracted legal battles with no apparent resolution, Paul Jr. lost the legal dispute in 2011 and was compelled to sell his share in Orange County Choppers to his father. The amount Jr. received from the sale remains to be determined, but it gave him the means to establish his own business. Interestingly, the lawsuit did not seem to have legal repercussions for the show or its network. Nonetheless, it wouldn't be surprising if the last episodes of American Chopper before its initial cancellation boasted high audience ratings. Contrary to popular belief, Paul Jr. did not immediately return to the Chopper building business after departing Orange County. Although he founded Paul Jr. Designs in 2009, initially, the firm focused on producing affordable steel camp stoves. The reason behind this unexpected business direction is quite apparent. As Paul Jr. explained to the Vancouver Sun then, taking control of his life and creating something from scratch proved challenging, especially after years of working under his father's guidance. However, considering it necessary, he did not regret choosing a different path. Twenty years of working with your father was just time, he shared with the Canadian Journal. While Paul's decision to manufacture stoves aligns with his background as a steel builder and his contractual restrictions after leaving Orange County, it's evident that his contract prohibited him from engaging in the bike business for a year after termination. 
Once this restriction was lifted in April 2010, Paul was finally able to turn the business into a successful motorcycle body shop, and since then, it has enjoyed continuous success. The eventual making up of the two tools might be a pleasant surprise to some, but it was a long process of forgiving and moving forward for both father and son. Following his departure from the series in 2009, TLC announced the triumphant return of the two tools to the small screen through the riveting series Senior vs. Junior, marking the inception of the first-ever spin-off of the iconic American Chopper. The show depicted the dynamic happenings at Orange County Choppers following Paul Jr.'s departure and served as a platform to promote his newly found adventure, Paul Jr. Designs. Despite a change in the network and four seasons on the air, the show was canceled for the second time in 2012, and it seemed that the strained relationship between Paul Jr. and Paul Sr. had not improved. American Chopper returned in 2013 with a special episode in late 2014. However, Paul Jr. wasn't in either of these shows, and fans had to wait until 2018 for his return when the original series returned. In this revival, the show focused on Orange County Choppers and Paul Jr. Designs, showing the improved relationship between father and son. Sadly, after the second season ended, there were no announcements about it returning, suggesting the series was canceled for the third time. At one point, it seemed like the family's seriously broken bonds couldn't be fixed. Thankfully, the Tootles worked hard to mend their relationship or improve it, leaving their old feud behind for much-needed peace. Paul Jr. later reconciled with his father, but he had started heading his own family, and in 2015, he and his wife Rachel welcomed their first son, Hudson Stephen. Paul Jr. delights in showcasing his family and endearing antics through pictures and videos on his vibrant Instagram account. In 2017, Paul Jr. shared his life story in the self-biography The Build, talking about his experiences at Orange County Choppers, the tough times that led to his downfall, and the triumphant journey to being an independent businessman. The story took a powerful turn when he compared his father to a challenging monster, thanking his firing as the thing that pushed him toward positive change. Shortly after, Paul Sr. talked about a revealing conversation with Junior, seemingly marking the final step toward fixing their differences. They both realized that their main issue was work-related, so they wisely avoided working together in the same shop, although they might do joint projects in the future. Despite Paul Jr.'s struggles with privacy, keeping tabs on Paul Jr.'s eventful life is made easy through his engaging social media presence and business website. In 2020, he triumphantly returned to TV with the captivating two-hour special episode, The Last Ride. This marked the first time in years that he collaborated with his father, Paul Sr., to craft a new chopper for a major company. Besides the past drama, Paul Jr.'s work life seems to be going well. His business, Paul Jr. Designs, gets regular orders from chopper fans and actively participates in exciting exhibitions and car events nationwide. In 2021, Paul Jr.'s business reached a big achievement by teaming up with the German bike company Rough Cycles to make the PJD Electric Bicycle, a unique e-bike collection that showed Paul Jr.'s creative side in a new way. Now known as an innovative bike designer, his business will grow, proving that his skill and determination can overcome challenges. In terms of money, Paul Tutul Jr. has done well with his motorcycle business and is popular on reality TV, gathering a net worth of $2 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. The youngest son, Mikey, had a different journey than his older brother. Mikey played a crucial role in keeping peace in the family and on the show. He chose a different path and explored the art world by opening an art gallery. This allowed him to express his creativity and showcase his artwork, like panoramic pieces. Although the gallery closed in 2014, Mikey continued his artistic journey in 2016 with the web series Wandering. Created with Jason Pohl, another cast member, the series aimed to highlight the issue of homelessness in New York City. Mikey faced challenges with addiction, leading to his removal from the Turtle family business. Yet he took steps to address his addiction, seeking rehabilitation and reconciling with his family. Mikey re-entered the business world as the assistant general manager of Orange County Choppers. Later, he entered the culinary world by founding Fark LC, a company mainly focused on pasta sauces. 
Despite recent legal battles, Mikey seems to be doing well financially. Vinny DiMartino also faced challenges, especially due to the 2008 financial crisis that caused economic turmoil, a drop in motorcycle sales, and less interest in custom modifications. Vinny adapted his business model by adding routine car maintenance and operated Five Force Customs for five years before transitioning to DiMartino Motorsports. With the conclusion of American Chopper, Vinny shifted his focus from two-wheeled machines to four-wheeled vehicles, in 2013, he sold his motorcycle equipment, using the proceeds to launch DeMartino Motorsports in Walden, New York. Vinny's post-Orange County Chopper's journey was successful, leading him to New York in 2002, where he secured a position with OCCCC. Initially working as a bicycle repairman and later as a Southeastern distributor, Rick Petko made several appearances on the show, making a name for himself within the Orange County Chopper family. Rick is a dedicated family man with two daughters facing a challenging 90-minute daily commute. However, it took him only a short time to realize he needed a change. So, he secured a position as the head fabricator, focusing on metalwork and creating and selling various metal items, including high-quality chef knives. More importantly, he runs this company from home to be with his family more. Cody Connolly started with Orange County Choppers when he was young, and it was clear he loved making motorcycles. He left American Chopper quietly when he was still learning. Fans wondered why he left and what he would do next. Even though he wasn't on TV, Cody kept loving motorcycles. With Vinny DiMartino, he started Five Force Customs, as we talked about before. They worked with other craftsmen at custom motorcycle events. Cody stayed away from mainstream TV but kept getting better at making motorcycles. People started to notice Cody's amazing work, not just the TV show. Jason Pohl, the designer known for his style and clashes with Paul Sr., used his Orange County Chopper experiences to boost his design career. After American Chopper, Jason did many design projects, not just motorcycles. His unique style mixed new ideas with usefulness, making him famous in the industry. On a personal side, Jason stayed private. But during an American Chopper Sr. vs. Jr. episode, he got mad at Paul Sr.'s criticism and threw a motorcycle off a lift. Now, Paul works for SolidWorks and runs his company, Jason Pohl Designs. Before working with Choppers, he studied fine arts at the Illinois Art Institute. In 2004, he joined Orange County Choppers and became a valuable part of the team. Even if he wasn't on TV, he worked hard and showed his design skills. The American Chopper cast members took different paths after the show, showing their passions and challenges. Each has a unique story after the show, and fans keep following them in business, unique bike designs, and more. Thanks for watching another episode. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos.